Hi everybody, this is Lars Vemir, and welcome to this Love VFX tutorial for Glassbox Technologies, in which I'll be showing you how to get up and running with Dragonfly from Maya. Dragonfly from Glassbox is the most accessible virtual camera solution that you can get right now. It's a plugin that allows you to control your virtual camera in Maya, Unreal Engine, or Unity with an iOS device and a game vice controller. This can be very useful to set up your camera blocking for full CG scenes, previous animation, and much more. Virtual production can be viewed as a workflow that bridges the gap between digital and live action filmmaking to help you realize the vision for your film. And in this tutorial, I will show you how to get started with Dragonfly for Maya. To test out the 15 days trial version of Dragonfly, you need to create a Glassbox account at glassboxtech.com register. Once you're logged in to your Glassbox account, you can go to these two links, click the free trial button in the page header, answer the trial questions, and get your trial. You will then be given your trial license activation key and instructions to download the software and get started. Keep this web page to hand, but don't worry if you lose it. You can also find your activation key in your account on the Glassbox Tech website. If you find you don't have enough time, these 15 days can be extended up to 30 days if you contact the Glassbox sales team on sales at glassboxtech.com. All licenses are node locked and you can either buy a for a while annual license of Dragonfly for $420 a year or a forever perpetual license for $750, which includes one year of support and updates. After that first year has passed, you need to pay a renewal fee of $250 for one more year of updates and support. Dragonfly requires an iOS device with an optional game vice controller, which is just another investment that is recommended for the full on Dragonfly experience or an OptiTrack setup. For the purposes of this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to use an iOS device and a game vice controller with Dragonfly. You can use it with an iPhone, but I would strongly suggest a more recent iPad and a matching game vice controller for it. Here is the list of iOS devices that are supported by the Dragonfly app. To download Dragonfly, you can go to your trial confirmation page or to the Dragonfly download page. Make sure you have the required hard and software for Dragonfly that is listed on the right side of this page under System Requirements. Then just download Dragonfly for Maya, unpack the downloaded zip file, and move the unzipped folder to another folder of your choice. Once you have done that, you need to let Maya know where the Dragonfly plugin is by going into Dragonfly's post built module folder, copying its file path, opening the Maya Dragonfly.mod file with a text editor, and pasting the file path you just copied into this section. Then you can save and close the file. And now we have to paste the file path we just copied into the Maya environment file, which you can find on your C drive in this location. If you open this Maya env text file, and there is already a file path in there for another tool, you can just insert a semicolon after it and paste the file path for Dragonfly right after it. If the file was empty when you open it, it should look something like this, but with your own file path to the post build module folder after the equal sign. Now you can start up Maya and load Dragonfly in the plugin manager. After the plugin gets loaded for the first time, the Glassbox license manager window will pop up. Now you need to input your trial license activation key to activate your 15 days trial version of Dragonfly. After the trial license is activated, you will have a new menu item in the upper menus and two vertical tabs on the right side of the Maya UI that are needed to work with Dragonfly. By default, the Dragonfly UI windows will start up on plug and load. Once you have activated it in Maya, you need to install the Dragonfly app on your iOS device. As of today, the app is available from TestFlight, so you'll need to install the TestFlight app from the App Store to install Dragonfly. But soon, Glassbox will be releasing the standalone Dragonfly iOS app to the App Store. After you have installed the TestFlight app on your iOS device, you can open this link in Safari and install the Dragonfly app. In order for Dragonfly to work, your computer and iOS device need to share the same network. The best networking setup is as follows. The Dragonfly PC should be connected via Ethernet to the network router, while the iPad is connected via Wi-Fi. 
Inside the iOS Dragonfly app, there will be a list of available servers to connect to. You can have an unlimited number of servers on one machine, but each new server must have a different port number on server start. Now you can finally go back to Maya, open Dragonfly setup tab, click on start server, and click on the Maya Dragonfly server button in the Dragonfly iOS app. The Dragonfly viewport that just popped up shows you the same output that you can see on your iOS device. So any viewport specific settings that are enabled on the viewport will affect the iPad viewport too. Now this is where the fun part starts. Congratulations! You now have a virtual camera and can move it around like a live action camera with your iOS device. Being able to use and afford such an awesome tool as a single user is just new territory for digital artists. By default, every inch or centimeter you move with the iPad is one inch or centimeter moved with the virtual camera inside your scene. Let me show you another scene to have something to look at with this virtual camera. When I start up Dragonfly in this scene, I am at floor height with the camera with a super wide focal length. To set this up the right way, we need to go to the operator main tab and modify a few settings. So let's reset the camera to zero. This will force the Dragonfly camera to zero, zero, zero in the scene. You can also change the Y rotation of the camera or change its scaling with all of these buttons, which will also change the velocity of the camera's movement. Change the X and Y location to 100. This moves the camera 100 units in the X and 100 units in the Y direction. Change the focal length to 50 millimeters and the frame rate to 25 frames per second. Now we can actually start to see the room and turn around with the camera. There are three spaces, local if no button is orange, local up if the first button is orange, and global if the second button is orange. You can change the camera's movement behavior to local up or world space. Local up refers to the left and right up and down movement relative to the camera, and world space to the movement of the fixed world axes. The default space is always local with Dragonfly. A snapshot is much like leaving a camera on a tripod so that you can come back later and have the same view or frame result. You can create camera snapshots under the Snapshots dropdown by clicking on the Create Snapshots button. You can jump between them by clicking on the Go To button. If you click on the Restore button, you will also recover the camera settings of these snapshots. These are settings like frame rate, focus distance, and even platform target objects, which can be really useful for the camera blocking of your scene, because you can quickly switch between camera positions and angles with different focal lengths. Another awesome feature of Dragonfly is the ability to parent your camera to another object. To set this up, you have to select your object and click on this black icon where it says Platform Target. In this case, our virtual camera is parented to a moving locator, but this could also be an animated character, a car, or any other animated object. There are two methods to platforming on a target. You can simply take the location of the object and activate the white circle button to also sample the rotation of the platform object and rotate with it. In the camera settings, there is even a way to parent the focus of your camera to an object by selecting the object and clicking on this black icon. This will force the focus method to be tracking and your focus distance UI field will be updated with the unit distance to your subject. There is a debug option for focus distance. By clicking on the highlight button, you will be given a red plane that represents your focus plane. To record a shot, you can simply press the respective record button in the Dragonfly iOS app. Or you can click on the record button in Maya at the bottom of the operator main tab. When you are recording, Maya will no longer loop your playback. So animation and recording will stop on the last frame. Once you have recorded a shot, it shows up in a list in the Review tab. You can review your shot by double-clicking on it in the list and pressing the Play button in Maya's Timeline UI. Notice how the frame range of your shot will be automatically set when you click on it and play it back. If you want your shot as a baked camera in Maya's Outliner, you can just right-click on it in the Shot list and click on Import. Motion tracking creates a lot of keyframes, and the quickest way to deal with them is found in the Smoothing section under the Review tab. Dragonfly smoothing sliders are non-destructive to your original camera tracking data, so using a value of 0 
for all of the sliders is the true recorded motion. The final part of this tutorial will be about connecting the GameVice controller to Dragonfly, which is the icing on the cake of your virtual camera experience with this tool. It's really awesome. First, you have to make sure that your GameVice controller is properly connected to your iOS device. The joystick speed can be altered by changing the value found inside the UI field under the Operator main tab. Please note that any value here will be multiplied with the unit conversion value found under the Setup tab. If you find the movement of your joystick to be too slow, first investigate your scaling factor, then start adding or subtracting from your joystick speed. Then back in the Operator main tab, under Movement Scaling, you need to click on Open Bindings to get the settings for the controller. In just a moment, I will show you how to create this setup. We have three axis bindings that will control the front to back movement relative to the camera, the left to right movement relative to the camera, and the up and down movement of the camera relative to the world space. We will let the left controller stick control the front, back, left and right movement, and the right controller stick will only control the world space up and down movement. With the left and right trigger of the controller, we will control the recording of the virtual camera. The left trigger will start the recording and the right trigger will stop the recording. The names of the three axis bindings are based on the controller stick side and the movement of the controller sticks we will perform during the binding process. So let's delete all of these bindings and recreate them. The first axis binding will be called left stick up and set to longitudinal. This will control the front to back movement relative to the camera. To bind it, we need to click on bind and move the left controller stick up. The second axis binding will be called left stick right and set to lateral. This will control the left to right movement relative to the camera. So let's click on bind and move the left controller stick to the right. The third axis binding will be called right stick up, set to vertical and world space. This will control the up and down movement of the camera relative to the world space. So let's click on bind and move the right controller stick up. At any time, you can invert your input by pushing the invert button, which will turn red when inverted. The first action binding will be called start rec and set to recording start in the drop down menu at the bottom. This will start the recording of the camera. So let's click on bind and press the left trigger. The second action binding will be called stop rec and set to recording stop in the drop down menu. This will stop the recording of the camera. So let's click on bind and press the right trigger. Done. We are all set now. I encourage you to play around with these settings to find out what controller stick and button mapping works best for you. And there are a lot of more functions that you can add to your controller, as you can see in this drop down menu. Unfortunately, the ID of your GameVice controller gets changed every time you start up your virtual camera. That means you need to go into your controller settings every time you have started the virtual camera, go to one of the binding settings, click on bind, perform the respective controller movement again, take the new controller ID, put it into all of the other bindings, and press enter after changing the IDs to make your controller work again. Fortunately, the Glassbox team is aware of this bug and they told me that there will be a fix for this coming soon. The setup you create with your controller gets saved to your Maya project folder automatically, but you can also save it to another location in the setup tab under config and save config. Just remember that Dragonfly will always reload the setting from your Maya project folder automatically. Now there's nothing more for me to do but to move the camera around, learn how to operate it well, and enjoy the new era of virtual production filmmaking. These are still the early days of virtual production, but maybe now you can start to imagine how much time you could save with Dragonfly by taking minutes instead of hours to record awesome camera moves instead of animating them by hand. Why would you want to do that now that you have seen how easy it can be? Just use Dragonfly and record another shot. All right, that was it for this episode of Love VFX Tutorials for Glassbox Technologies. I really hope you liked it. If you want to see more of these videos, don't forget to subscribe. Again, this is Lars Vemje. Thanks for watching and goodbye, everybody.